Today we're going to learn how to round to the nearest hundred using a number line. So in my previous lesson, I taught you how to round to the nearest ten using a number line. So if you haven't checked out that video, make sure you go ahead and check it out. But this video is all about how to round to the nearest hundred. The cool thing about rounding to the nearest hundred, in my opinion, I think is actually easier to round to the nearest hundred than it is to the nearest ten. So let's recap. Remember that rounding is an estimate. It's not the exact number, but a number close to it. All right, math besties, let's get ready to round to the nearest hundred. Let's go! All right, math besties, so we have our first example. We have the number 542, and our goal is to round it to the nearest hundreds. So I'm going to go ahead and underline the hundreds place, and I'm going to do step one to establish the boundary numbers. So what hundreds family does 542 live in? 500. That's right. And what's the next hundreds family? 600. So these are known as the boundary numbers. I know that 542 lives somewhere between these two numbers. Now, step two, find the midpoint. Boop. The midpoint is the halfway point between two numbers. So what is the midpoint between 500 and 600? It's 550. How do I know this? Well, What's the midpoint between zero and 100? 50. Good. What about 100 and 200? 150. What about 200 and 300? 250. Are you noticing a pattern? It ends with 50. So anytime we're looking for the midpoint between two hundreds that end with a zero, the midpoint's always going to end with the 50. All right, step three, compare and round. We're going to compare our number with the midpoint. All right, let's go ahead and start in the hundreds place. Is five hundreds equivalent to five hundreds? Yes. What about four tens and five tens? Is that equivalent? No. I know that four tens is less than five tens. So I'm going to go ahead and plot it right here, 542. And because of this, we're going to go ahead and round down because the number 542 is closer to 500 than it is to 600. So 542 rounded to the nearest 100 is 500. All right, besties, let's go do example number two. Okay, so for this example, we have the number 781, and we're going to round it to the nearest 100 hundreds using the number line. So I'm going to go ahead and underline the hundreds place here, and we're going to do step one. Find the boundary numbers. So what hundreds family does 781 live in? 700. And the next hundred family is? 700. 800. So we're done with step one. Check. All right, now step two. Find the midpoint. So boop. So what is the midpoint between 700 and 800? Hmm, remember what I told you about ending with a 50? That's right, 750. That's the midpoint. All right, now step three, compare our number with the midpoint and round. Remember, if our number is less than the midpoint, we're going to round down. But if our number is greater or equal to the midpoint, we're going to round up. So let's go ahead and compare. Is 700s and 700s equivalent? Yes. What about 810s and 510s? No. I know that 810s is greater than 510s. And because it's greater, it's going to be plotted somewhere around here, 781. We're going to round up to 800. So 781 rounded to the nearest 100 is 800 because it's closer to 800 than it is to 700. All right, besties, now that I showed you two examples, go ahead and grab a paper, a pencil, uh, or a whiteboard, and let's go ahead and do some practice problems together. It's now bestie practice time. Feel free to pause the video and work ahead of me or just follow along for more guided practice. All right, besties, go ahead and draw a number line on your paper. We're gonna go ahead and start off with number one, the number 217, and our goal is to round it to the nearest 100. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and underline the hundredth place, which is two in this case. And then we're going to ask ourselves, well, what are the boundary numbers between what two hundreds does it live in? 
between 200 and the next 100 is 300. Great job. Now, step two is to find the midpoint, boop, which is the halfway point between two numbers. So what is in the middle between 200 and 300? Hmm, 200. 50. Awesome job. Now, step three is to compare our number, 217, with the midpoint, 250. So is 200 and 200 equivalent? Yes. What about 110 and 510? No, 110 is less than 510. So since our number is less than the midpoint, we're actually going to go ahead and round down to 200. All right, besties, awesome job. Now we're going to go ahead and do example number two. We have the number 839. The first step is to underline the hundreds place, which is eight. And then we're going to establish the boundary numbers, which is 800. And the next hundred is 900. Awesome. Step two is to find the midpoint, which is 800. 50. Good job. All right, now we're going to compare our number with the midpoint. So is 800 at 800 equivalent? Yeah. What about three tens and five tens? No. Once again, three tens is less than five. So we're going to round 839 down to 800. So 839 is closer to 800 than it is 900. All right, it's bestie bonus time. So we have a four digit number here, 1,567. And we're going to round it to the nearest hundred. So if you haven't paused the video, make sure you do now so you can challenge yourself. All right, besties, we're going to follow the same three steps. I'm going to underline the hundreds place, which is the five in this case, and then establish the boundary numbers. So 1,567 lives between 1,500, good job, and the next hundreds is 1,600, great job. Now step two is to find the midpoint, which is 1,550. Do you notice that there's a pattern? 50, 50, 50, <laughs> awesome job. Now we're gonna do our last step, which is we're gonna compare our number with the midpoint. So is 1,000, 1,000 equivalent? Yeah. What about 500s and 500s? Yes. What about 610s and 510s? No. 610s is greater than 510s. So because it's greater, we're going to round up to 1,600. The 1,567 is closer to 1,600. Awesome job, besties. That's the end of our math lesson. Thank you so much, Math Bestie, for learning with me today. Make sure you keep on practicing to make math easy peasy.